This is a documentary that I really hope will be widely seen. And I think we'll have the chance to be widely seen because it's on Netflix and people watch things on Netflix. Go watch it. I think it's about having the opportunity to change the narrative. And here it's the narrative around the Paralympic Games. Uh, The directors here, Ian Bonnet and Peter Tudgi, who also did the Alexander McQueen McQueen, doc. Which was great, yeah. Yeah, really good. (laughs) That was from 2018. They do treat this partially as a beginner's guide, so you get the history of the Games. And its founder, Dr. Ludwig Gutmann, who was a Jewish neurologist who fled Nazi Germany and came to England, spent the war caring for soldiers with spinal cord injuries, and realised that sports actually could be a very important part of rehabilitation. And so what started as a sports competition just between his patients morphed into the first Paralympic Games in Rome in 1960, and it was staged kind of it's it's staged as a parallel to the Olympics, hence the name, but usually it's kind of starts after the Olympic Games. And we've got a clip to sort of introduce a little bit of the concept. It's what we train for. When that gun goes off in the race, you just do it without thinking. And at that point, I was in the lead. But the issue is I suddenly get focused on the wrong things. All I thought was Oscar's going to be coming past me in a minute. Because in every previous Paralympic final, Oscar just picked the single leg on the line by, like, the tiniest of margins. I just absolutely pants, (laughs) basically. I'm just getting so tense, just, just, just trying to fight to get to that finish line. Oh, man. I feel like you can tell from that clip. I mean, the central concept and the central part of this is is it's the mood. And it's none of this sort of patronizing, sort of faux inspiring language that you often get when telling the stories of disabled people of, oh, look, if they can do this, then we can do anything. You know, it's off, that's often targeted towards able-bodied people. Like, yeah. yes, the people profiled in this have faced incredible adversity. They have overcome people telling them, oh, you can't do this, this isn't for you. But mainly, they are just highly trained athletes. They are powerhouses. Mm -hmm. And the analogy that they use is that they're basically Marvel's Avengers. (laughs) And to quote, life is a fight, we're trying to save the world. And I love that. That is the driving force in this documentary. It's like someone switched the flip between, um, flip the switch between documentary mode to blockbuster mode. Yeah. You have Daniel Pemberton, who did the the great Birds of Prey (laughs) soundtrack, which I love. (laughs) And he creates both, you know, the big, bombastic, heroic themes and also the the simmering tension, those little moments of tension. And I love that when they introduce locations, they'll have the subtitle London and then the big inception, like, blah. (laughs) And, And the Duke of Sussex is there. He's fancy, very big scale. And there are all these gorgeous evocative shots of the athletes that are profiled and the one that I really loved is this Italian wheelchair fencer named Bebe Vio yes she's amazing (laughs) and it's the one shot where she is wearing uh, this is very specific but a a 2017 spring summer Christian Dior dress I'm sorry I love fashion I'm sorry and it's got (laughs) swords it's got these swords embroidered down the skirt a giant heart bodice and she's standing in this baroque ornate palace and she just looks so ethereal. She looks like Joan of Arc. She looks like a warrior woman. And it's just such a beautifully composed shot. And every athlete in this gets that moment to just be like, yeah, I'm a superhero. And I liked as well that the the way that they treat people's backstories, it's really kind of like a superhero informing why they do what they do now. Exactly. Um, like uh, one of them is Jean-Baptiste Allais. And he fled the Burundian civil war and moved to France in the 90s. And he suffered immeasurable trauma. He was involved in a machete attack. His mother was killed. He lost a leg. But he does the long jump because it gives him it gives him a sense of freedom. He's running away. Yeah. Yeah. And just for one moment, he can feel like he's flying. And I think I think that that's just incredible the way that they compose that. And um 
You do have several versions of the games coming in. You have Beijing 2008, London 2012, but it's largely around the 2016 Rio de Janeiro games. Oh, you couldn't write a narrative like this, you know, in terms of like the Olympic Committee of, oh, we don't have enough money for the Paralympics sort of thing. And then it's kind of like, we, we're not taking no for an answer. And it's this fight and drive. And you see the passion from the Paralympian Committee and how much this means to them as well as the, the you know, because a few of those have been previous Paralympians themselves. So that drive is still there for these kind of new athletes that are coming through and the necessity and importance of these events. Yeah, and, and this horrible moment where the Olympic Committee of Rio de Janeiro turns around and says, mm, we don't think we have the money. And suddenly everyone's dreams and aspirations are on the line and years of training. Yeah, and I think that's just such a good example of... of what discrimination looks like for yeah. disabled people. It's this idea that the games, oh, they're separate, they're over there, they're not yeah. a real sport, it's, it's something else. And I love that they brought up the billboards that they had before the London Games, <laughs> which which did the London Paralympic Games, and it just said, thanks for the warm-up. Yeah, and when you saw that stadium and the reaction that they got, and then, you know, cut, hit, get to the end of, of Rio and that closing ceremony and the celebration that was going on after it actually you know, been able to happen was was extraordinary. It's so great that they've been given a voice and they've been given a kind of really truthful representation in this film. I think it's, um, I love the analogy of the superhero thing. I think it's brilliant and it's uh, it's really powerful. I cried so much watching this film. Yeah, and I love that it's so evocative, it's so exciting. It's yeah. such an exciting documentary to watch, but then it's smart in the way that it leads you to this question of, Right. Why are the Paralympics an afterthought? Like, why does society perceive these two games to be separate mm -hmm. in any way? And I think every able-bodied person should ask themselves that. And I certainly ask myself that after watching it as a sort of non-sports person. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, gosh, I'd never really, really thought about it in the way that this documentary makes you think about it.